What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So, as we saw yesterday, a shocking move by the Green Bay Packers on the trade deadline, trading away Rasul Douglas to the Buffalo Bills for a third round pick, also giving up a fifth round pick. Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst had a press conference this morning, the first time he has talked since August, and he gave a little bit more insight on that trade. So in today's video, we're gonna go over everything Brian Gutekunst said about the Rasul Douglas trade, and then also give my extended thoughts on it. I did go live right after the trade happened yesterday, so if you do wanna go rewatch that, you can. It's right there on my channel. But since the day has passed now, I kinda wanna give my extended thoughts on it as well. And since it is the start of a new month, that means I have another giveaway. Thank you to Pristine Auction for the first half of November. And that is this signed framed photograph of Packers linebacker Devondre Campbell. It's such a massive photograph, I can't even really show it the full thing on the screen. Pristine Auction is an amazing source for everything sports signed memorabilia. They have tons of awesome deals for signed Packers gear. Everything you see behind me is signed and authenticated from Pristine Auction. As we see here on the website searching up Green Bay Packers, there's a framed signed Jordy Nelson jersey. There's helmets, other jerseys, um, football cards, even signed pylons and footballs. There's so so much cool stuff on this website. So the way you enter in that signed Devondre Campbell photo giveaway is head to pristineauction.com with the link in the description and register on their website using my code BASS, B-A-S. Doing so will enter you in this giveaway, all future giveaways, as well as give you $10 off your first order through Pristine Auction. So it's a win-win. All right, so now let's dive down into the couple things Brian Gutekun said about the whole Rasul Douglas trade we saw yesterday, which just came out of the blue and it's not often we hear from Brian Gutekunst so it was kind of cool to hear from him the day after this big trade went down so bringing up the first tweet here it says Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst opens with thoughts on Rasul Douglas and Rashawn Gary on Douglas quote thank him for his time here and all the work and leadership he provided us Brian Gutekunst adds they weren't openly looking to trade Douglas but a call came from out of the blue a couple days ago the Bills offer of a top 100 pick in next year's draft was too good to pass on then Gutekunst goes on to mention a top 100 pick for Douglas means they'll probably get a top 50 pick on their draft board, Gutekunst says. Interesting way to look at it. So to go over the first couple of tweets, obviously him thanking Rasul Douglas for what he gave to the Green Bay Packers as a street free agent a few years ago. Came right in and offered a lot for this Packers defense, and he definitely will be missed on this Packers defense. I feel like he was one of the sole players this year that still had heart at this point in time, being 2-5 and five, heading into Week 9. Then he mentioned that he wasn't openly shopping Rasul Douglas, which I kind of said on my live stream yesterday. That's how I thought it was. I just thought maybe the Bills who were looking for a cornerback called up the Packers interested in Douglas and then the Packers got an offer they couldn't refuse a third round pick and ended up giving a fifth round pick now if the Packers just did a Rasul Douglas for third round pick I would obviously be a lot happier but at the end of the day they lost so many free agents last year Alan Lazard Randall Cobb Adrian Amos Robert Tunyon Jerron Reed so they're most definitely going to get a fifth round comp pick and even more back so to me that part's not a huge deal but getting a third round pick is massive and I know you're thinking thinking, hey, the Packers are not good at drafting third round players, which I 100% would agree with you. But this just gives the Packers more ammunition to potentially maybe move up in the first round, say if they're at number seven and want to move up for someone like Marvin Harrison Jr. or move back up into the first round from the second round in which they have two picks. And I know a lot of you are probably wondering, what does the whole Brian Gutekun saying we're likely going to get a top 50 player on our draft board with a top 100 pick? And this is basically what it means means in my opinion so every NFL team has their own draft board their own parameters for players such as athleticism height and weight we see this a lot with the Green Bay Packers with the whole RAS argument but mainly the Packers like their athletes so every single NFL team has a different draft board they're not just all going off of PFF or CBS consensus draft board like we like to do this is completely different they have a set of scouts they have a whole team paid to set their own draft board and their own players that they like this is every single team so this is why all the time during drafts that some players we see keep falling and falling we're like oh how is a team not drafted him yet and it's simply because he's not high on pretty much every NFL team's draft board like he is on something like PFF or CBS which NFL teams don't use 
So based off of the Packers and Brian Gutekunst's draft board, he gets more of his own top 50 players in the top 100 picks. Therefore stating that this top 100 pick will likely net him one of his own top 50 players on his draft board. Which you could argue his top 100 picks, especially in the third round, have not been good with Josiah DeGuara, Amari Rodgers, and now Sean Ryan, who the verdict's still out on Sean Ryan, but we really haven't seen him play at all. And then Tucker Craft this year, which obviously is still a rookie player. So you could argue that, okay, well, well, if these are top 50 players on his board, why were they there to begin with? But at the end of the day, it's the draft. No one really knows to a full extent how these players are going to, you know, transition to the NFL until they get there. That's why you have really good players falling to the sixth to seventh round and having an awesome NFL career afterwards. So going back to the Rasul Douglas trade itself, as I got a little bit off track there, I personally am happy with the trade. Rasul Douglas was signed as a street free agent in 2021, and the Packers netted a third round pick off of him after just two years. So it's not like they spent a draft pick on him and they're getting a lesser one back or they signed him for a massive amount in the free agency and he didn't play well and they're trying to get some compensation back. I think getting a third round pick for a cornerback that's going to be 29 next year is excellent value. And I know a lot of people don't care about the draft pick and they're more so just worried about this cornerback room, which is a correct argument and worried about leadership in this defense or in this team as a whole, which again is a correct argument. But I don't really see what Russell Douglas will do for the Green Bay Packers next year, considering he would have had over an $11 million cap hit. And it really seems like at this point, the Packers are kind of starting this rebuild, considering they sold their number two cornerback in what is already kind of a weak room this year on the trade deadline. So yes, there's going to be concerns for the rest of the season at this cornerback room, and it's going to be a weak point on this defense for sure. But we're going to see a lot more of Carrington Valentine. So we'll get a better talent evaluation for him as the year goes on. Maybe someone like Robert Michelle will turn into the next Rasul Douglas, come out of nowhere as a street free agent and start providing for the Packers defense. You know, we've seen this happen with Rasul Douglas, so it's not a crazy stretch of imagination to think that it could happen again. Brian Gutekunst actually has done an excellent job at finding street free agents. Rasul Douglas, Devondre Campbell, there's a lot more that you could name that have contributed to this team. And to have someone like that contribute to the team for the period they did and then also net a third round pick off of them, I think is awesome value. Like I said, Rasul Douglas was going to be 29 years old next year. How many cornerbacks in the NFL stay at a high level upwards of 30 years old. Not many really do. Not to mention, like I said, his cap hit next year was going to be $11.6 million, and now they will save $6.5 million of that off the salary cap next year, where they have to do a lot of different moves to garner more money, one of which David Bakhtiari. But once they decide what they're going to do with David Bakhtiari, now this Rasul Douglas deal and the Rashawn Gary extension, the Packers should have a decent amount of money to play around with in 2024 and 2025 for free agency as as well as a ton of draft capital now that they have five picks in the top 100. So just like my yesterday's instant reaction, I'm still happy with this trade. I would have liked to see the Packers maybe give a sixth round instead of the fifth round, but as I stated earlier, the Packers are going to get more picks in those rounds from compensatory selections, so that will just kind of replace itself. But I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, what do you think of this trade as a whole, and what do you think of the cornerback room going forward for at least this season? But I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, Go Pack Go!